If you're going to be renovating your own space, then do yourself a favor and buy quality appliances. Stuff like this from Z-Line is amazing because they have these kind of features. that You can do your own maintenance and repairs. You can take care of maintaining the surface of the stainless steel. So do yourself a favor, spend a little extra money, get good quality appliances, and you increase the value of your home and the quality of your life. So just to bring you all up to speed with what's going on in the process here, I had my plug installed here originally. I knew it was kind of temporary because we hadn't really finalized the design as far as which hood fan we were going with. We had a few options available. I knew I needed power up here. I knew it would have to be a plug, but I didn't know location. So originally, we thought we were going to be using a hood that's kind of a flat bottom, and it would look something like this, right? And then the side of the hood is going to be very vertical, and my plug would be covered by that little tower that goes with it. But it turns out we end up getting something a little bigger. It has a different design. It looks more something like this. All right. Okay, problem. Now my plug is completely buried behind the hood. So I had to cut a hole, reach in, find that power supply, pull the wire loose, connect it to a new box. Now it's floating because I have to put a six inch exhaust the tower that it comes with is only nine inches wide and you really don't want to have a cavity more than eight just to be on the safe side. So what I'm looking at doing is I want to put in my exhaust from the outside, get it ready to be connected to the top of the unit which sits around here. And then I'm going to find a location for this and I might even just have it sitting here. I don't really know yet. We're going to figure that out later. There's a, there is some wood up here that I can screw it to and I'd like to have it mounted if I could. But at the end of the day, once this is all installed, if I have to have it sitting here, it's not the end of the world because it's behind something that's all fixed and attached to the wall. And it's completely enclosed with a cover on. So, let's get into locating the outside, drilling this out, and installing our exhaust vent. Once we have that, we're going to measure off our location, put in our, our screws so that we can mount the unit on the wall, then we'll confirm the location and that everything is level before we proceed with connection. Now you can see I'm dealing with the old wooden siding here and there's two layers and there's nails everywhere. So the last thing I want to do is pull out an expensive six inch round drill bit and core drill this. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use this to isolate a few locations outside so that I can cut the siding on the outside nice and clean. It's getting cool outside and that means that if I use any kind of cutting tool I risk shattering that siding and it's going to look like crap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill through, take the grinder out, cut a nice circle, and then I'm going to take the sawzall and I'm going to connect all the dots and then we're going to have a beautiful looking hole in the wall. And daylight. Yeah, we got a couple inches of wood to get through, that's for darn sure. Unbelievable, eh? The reason I'm drilling so many holes is because when I'm on the outside using the reciprocator, I can just connect the dot. Kind of like kind of like that old that old that old tracing game in school, you know, they give you a picture with nothing but dots and you have to connect all the dots. I'm just going to take the reciprocator and go from one hole to the next.
it. It takes a little bit more time to be this exact, but the smaller the hole, the easier it is to finish nice. Bam. Okay, so we're done with that tool. Now we got to go inside, figure out how much we got to cut back off that material, and I'll show you why. Okay, so before we go put that in, there's a couple things we want to go through. When dealing with hood fans, one of the concerns that you're going to have is if you can imagine this just this being the wall and this being the mounted hood fan, look how close the exhaust is to the wall. So when I install this, I have to make a 90 degree turn to go out the wall. So here's my flexible ducting and I can get relatively 90 degrees. And this is the piece that goes into, the, into my wall. So I've really got to be able to get that in there a couple of inches. So let's take a look and see if this works. First, okay. Yeah, that's going to fit inside. And I mean, just freaking barely. Now here's the consideration. If that fits inside, and I'm coming off the wall a couple of inches, all right, I need to make sure that my hood fan cover is going to leave me enough room. So what I want to do is I want to actually cut this back to about a couple of inches inside the depth of the wall. So that this is on my wall and this connection is happening inside my wall. If that makes enough sense. <laughs> you know, it's funny because there are a lot of different hood fans out in the market and a lot of different situations for install. And in a lot of cases, if you don't buy the right product, you're going to have to install your hood fan and then do all your ducting after the fact. And you aren't going to have the flexibility that you need to make that corner, make that installation. This product here that comes with the Z-Line hood fan is amazing because for me, it's too long. But I have the luxury out of being able to unscrew the end, measure the length that I want, cut off all the excess, screw that end back on again, and I'm in business. Okay, so the way I'm going to finish this off later is I'm going to be filling this cavity with expansion foam. All right, it's the only way that I can get anything close to resembling a good insulation level, which means the first two or three inches of that cavity is going to be foam. I can actually cut my tin way back inside there, right? Then I can put the exhaust on, screw it from the outside, put on the protective seal. Even though there's a light rain and it's only a couple of degrees outside, the exterior caulking that we purchased it's going to be no problem to perform and cure in that kind of weather scenario. So I'm more than happy to take care of that today. Get that all finished up and sealed up. And then once we get this installed here, I can foam this area. Then we can worry about mounting the hood. There you go, eh? By cutting a nice perfect circle, you got lots of meat to screw these pieces in here. Just don't over compress because you'll end up distorting the siding. Here we go. Across the top. A little bit on the nails, on the screws, sorry. Now I'm using exterior deck screws so they won't deteriorate, but my caulking is the same color as the, my hood fan, so this will blend a lot nicer. And then if it does happen to rust somewhere in the future, that solves that problem. Now, when you're caulking, make sure you caulk in behind the flange and these gaps, because that's where the wind is going to drive the rain and that's how that's going to get in. So what I want to do now is I want to actually measure the height from my finished hood fan up into the screw mount. Now that's tricky, but since they give us this packaging, I'm going to just use it as my square. There we go. I'm going to mark a hole on my styrofoam. Huh? And I'm going to trace a line for the bottom. Bam. Now, I can measure. 
So I want to put my screws 12 and 3 quarters higher than my finish of my hood fan. So let's take a look and see what our options are. Now, I want my hood fan to finish on the raised side of this beveled tile. You can see there's a bevel line here. Okay, so I'm just going to mark so you can see what I'm thinking here. That's the bevel. So anywhere underneath this bevel is a nice flat surface for the most part, which is ideal for the hood fan. My hood fan should be 30 to 36 inches higher. So I think instead of going 30, we're going to go for the 31 mark, which is just below the bevel line. Now remember in earlier videos, we use the laser level to put our plugs on the wall, to set our countertop height, to install all of our tile, everything. Everything in this room, even the windows, has been done with the laser level. So by using it now, we are going to guarantee everything is going to be absolutely perfect. This is one thing you just don't want to live without. So that makes it 12 inches there. 12 and 3 quarters is too close to the top of that tile. I think we're going to drop it down just a bit. Yeah. So we're going to wait for the bouncing to stop. I'm going to trace my line where my screws are going to go. Uh -huh. To that grout line, because that grout line is actually my center. Because that's how we established the tile when we installed it. Right there. I'm going to mark my center line. Okay. Now we'll turn the laser off because we don't need it anymore. We also want to know exactly how far between the holes we are. So that's four. All right, the holes are centered exactly seven inches. So let's translate three and a half inches. Each way and then confirm that we got that right. Good. So that's where I'm going to be drilling to put my holes. It's that simple. Nice. time now, right? <laughs> now if you follow our videos you know I love using the quarter inch yellow wall plugs. I buy them in one pack, I use them for everything. That way I only ever have to buy a quarter inch drill. Gives you a really good grip. These wall plugs are never coming in. Now, we want to hold them off the wall a little bit because it slips over, and then we'll tighten them up. So, this fan is a Z line snow white stainless steel finish designed to go with my dual fuel stove. And as a result of that, I had to upgrade the power of this up to 760 instead of your traditional 400 CFM. Just because whenever you're dealing with gas appliances, you want a little bit better exhaust. Okay, here we go. Now, some of you might actually even enjoy doing this. <laughs> I really am not a big fan of all of this packaging on the stainless steel. I get why they do it, but the amount of fingerprints and everything you leave on the stainless when you're taking all this off, I just don't think it's worth the benefit of protecting it, but hey, who am I to complain? There we go. And, 
Okay. That's just way too much easy, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Now, now that we got it on the screw mount, we'll just tighten her up. So, before we go any further, I should mention that Z-Line is supplying the appliances for my kitchen. Just want to be perfectly honest here. Now, the reason we were absolutely enthralled with the idea of doing this collaboration is Appliance Educator is a, a group of guys that are really working hard to try to develop themselves as an authority and helping people install appliances. And they've got a YouTube video and a lot of blogs and a lot of vlogs all about information to help people out. So they contacted us and said, hey, can we do a collaboration? I said, sure. Who's your favorite appliance company to deal with? They introduced me to Z-Line. Now, they're not available in Canada yet, so if you're a Canadian viewer, be patient. But if you're down in the United States, they're all over the place. Um, feel free to check them out. The quality is great. It's a family-owned company. What can, you can't go wrong with that. They're made in America. So I'm really pleased. And so far, this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. I'm a big believer that if you're going to renovate your own space, the finishings that you put in your house, your countertops, your kitchens, your appliances, those things spend good money on. That's where you get value in your home, okay? So that's where the investment is. Put an investment in good quality finishings. That's your wow factor. That's your value in your home when you get it appraised. So don't cheap out in situations like this. This is where you want to save your money. The reason you're doing DIY is so that you can buy the nice things to put in your house. That's where you get your valuation. Anyway, let's carry on with the installation. It has LED lights. It has three grills that go underneath that are dishwasher safe. Yay, awesome, awesome. Various speeds, various lighting. Here's the cord. It just plugs in. Boom. All we have to do now is foam up around the hole and then cut and measure our ducting so that we can finish this off and then install the tower. <laughs> the installation is not that bad once you get all of the work in the wall done. So really the key is if you have the opportunity, unlike myself, have this on site before you renovate your space so you can get all your locations perfect before you start. <sighs> Otherwise, this is how you do it if you don't. <laughs> I'm going to set that there. Now this might seem pretty extreme for some folks, putting this much foam in the hole. But remember, I've gone through great lengths to try to make a nice thermal and vapor barrier around here. And if you want to see how we did it, you can watch that other video. We'll put the link up here. It's a lot of work doing thermal and vapor barrier on an old home. But when it's done right, my God, is it ever comfortable. You know, one of the benefits I almost mentioned is the, uh, the snow finish on the stainless. Apparently, they've got um, special buffing pads that you can use to continually maintain this gorgeous shine. Uh, we're gonna try that out. It's shipping in the mail, so as soon as we get it, I think we'll try it out on the stove when we install the stove. But I'm looking forward to seeing that because that makes maintenance a brand new world. Stainless is lovely. But sometimes it's going to be pain to clean. Apparently they've solved that problem. Alright, so let's rough to make the measurement fully extended. Because if I make it too big, I can always shrink it. Right? And then somewhere around here. Like that. Ah. Okay, so we'll just take these two grooves here and line them up. Cut it. Woo -hoo. <laughs> That's not as easy as it looks. <laughs> so this actually goes inside my steel round. I think that's going to be the most challenging part of the fit, isn't it? Oh, glad I saved the twist tie for the electrical. 
And this is going to keep that out of the way while I do the rest of my install. Okay. Sweet. I'm really happy with it, except for that one spot where my ducting seems to have a little bit of a hole. So I'm going to seal that up with my foam. Done. There we go. Okay. Whew. Okay, now for the hard part. <laughs> now when you open your package, and you see this little plastic square, don't throw that out. It's actually important. Because unlike most hood fans that are out there, this one comes pretty much restaurant quality, and that is actually a grease trap. There's two holes in the bottom of the blower that when you take out your filters to wash, you can check this out, you can slide it out, pour out any of the grease that's been dripping inside the ductwork, and then you're right back in business again. Great for maintenance. Now these are the great covers for the fan. They slide in place, and then there's a locking mechanism. That's it, nice and simple. And you will notice that there is no filter in this, okay? We're not filtering the air here, we're exhausting it. Now, if you wanted to have a system where you're recirculating the air back into the kitchen, then on the top where we added the ducting, there is a activated carbon filter you can put on that, but then you also have to get a tower that has vented sides, okay? So that is an option, uh, but for me, I like to exhaust the air. Just makes life simple. Basically, this design is to, to, to grab grease and dirt and just collect it, okay? That's it. So that's why you throw it in the dishwasher once a week, whatever, and keep it clean. Nice and easy. So this is the designer series. And they call it designer. Basically what that means is it's a lot more difficult to install. <laughs> there are systems out there. Now you have an option to buy a two piece it's sleeves. You know, one will sit on the fan, the other one you lift up to the ceiling, you screw it into a bracket, nice and simple. This one, there's a mounting screw here. And that actually attaches just at the top of the housing on the back of the van. And then there's this, this wall plate actually installs against the wall at the ceiling height, okay? And it's cut out like this in case you have a, an exhaust that goes up through the roof and out, out through the roof. Since ours goes out the side, we don't have to worry about the hole, but we do have a decorative trim for the crown molding. So you mount that on the wall, you leave just a little bit of room from the ceiling, and then you can slide this crown molding to get that finish. That's the designer finish. It's sleek, there's no joints, right? You can wipe it down and clean without slicing your hand open on that exposed edge. And it looks pretty good. So this is what we're gonna do. And because of that, we have the ability to cut it to size. Now, I have never been a big fan of cutting stainless steel. I did go to the store and I picked up a blade for my grinder. Here's hoping that it works. Now, here's that location for the mounting screw I was talking about. So we want to measure from that groove up to the ceiling. Now, since the crown molding is two inches thick, we got a lot of mercy here. So for the purpose of making our cut, we're just going to take a little bit off the top. We'll go 18 and a half, just so we don't have any issues. Now, I know I'm a safety second kind of guy, but to not wear glasses right now would make safety third. Got to be smart. Get it in. All right, so it's a stroke of genius, the engineering here. Remember our, our screw holes were seven inch apart to the middle of the screw? This mounting flange, center line, same gap, seven inches, which means I can take my laser level, throw it on the wall, hit my screw, and then my, my spot on the roof is exactly the same spot. So I'm going to put this up here. Not tight though. Remember, the finished trim goes over top. 
So we're going to drop it down just a hair. Okay, mark my spot. I'll move the laser line to the other side, do the same, and we'll screw it in. Do -do -do -do. This will ensure that my tower is exactly level. I'm just loving it. There's nothing on this wall that wasn't done with a laser level. Gotta buy that tool. It's in our Amazon link. Check it out. Da -da -da -da. All right. Okay. Love it. So now, this one goes on here. Okay. Now this goes actually behind. Okay, we'll get the set screws. Yeah, loving that. Okay. That's very discreet. Love that. And now the moment of truth. Oh, very cool. Okay. Interesting. Now, I know it looks a little ugly up there. The reality is, is my house is bowed. The last course of tile, I, I installed it because I wanted to see how ugly it was and talk about options. We decided we're gonna pull this off we're going to be putting a 3 8 inch piece of uh, good one side plywood all the way across and then we're going to add a new crown molding to both sides of the room to balance the lookout. It's the only way we can do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off for now. I'm going to get all that installed and then we're going to reinstate this later. Nice and tight. So let's take a look at this. Boom. Nice. It's got the backlighting. One of the reasons why we did the herringbone tile is because we wanted a fan with backlighting. A lot of times the lights are here. But that's not needed because we have lots of lights in the ceiling. This is where you need your light. That's awesome. Now here's the fan. We're going to go through the different stages here. This is a cooking temperature, it's a cooking speed, sorry. That right there is running 400 CFM. No problem at all, right? Of course, you can ramp it up depending on what you're doing. If you've got all six burners of your stove going and you've got smoke and steam and grease flying everywhere, you can crank it right up, all right? There you go. All the power you need. And at the same time, the lowest decibels imaginable. This is awesome. All right, so the hood fan's all installed. Let's take a peek at the lights. Now, <laughs> you're going to notice this is a white and this is a yellow. The reason for that is I've changed this light bulb because I have a ton of pot lights in my room. They're all like 4,000 color temperature. And the yellow lights here really stood out and said, hey, I'm yellow. So what we're going to show you now is how to replace it. Because we contacted Z-Line and they sent up some replacement lights. And the best part about this is, if you're renovating and you're doing the same thing, this light here pops right out, okay? And it has a little harness on it. it disengages, just to click together. So you can swap out the light. Nice and easy. I'm wearing this headlamp so I can see what I'm doing in here. Boom, done. Okay, there you go. Now. Boom. Now everything's white light, just like the rest of the house. That is a quick, easy fix. So glad the folks at Z-Line figured out how to do that. That's a DIY repair. Beautiful. Now i got gorgeous downlight, lights just like the rest of the room. If this information was helpful for you and you're no longer afraid of installing one of these hood fans, then subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. And if you are subscribed to the channel, double check your notifications, make sure they're on so that YouTube will tell you every time we put a video up, usually nine o'clock Saturday night, Eastern Standard Time. So now if you need help with your renovations, consider joining our membership program. For five bucks a month, you get access to me. I guarantee to answer your questions. You can send us emails and pictures and we'll correspond to help you with your project. And if you're looking for more information, because maybe a big renovation like this isn't in your budget, and you're looking for more of a remodel, consider clicking the link right here. 
We have a second channel that has a lot of design videos in it, and we have a kitchen remodel there that's just a real quick makeover. I think it costs less than $1,000. That would be a great idea.